when, um, when Will wanted to communicate with his mother, lost in the upside down, trying to communicate to the right side up world, he used lights. And mother with the hope that the lights weren't just random, that her son was actually alive in a different world, began to just what other people would think would be go crazy, establish communication. And eventually, Will would come from the upside down and be in the right side up. I don't know if you noticed it, but every video at the very beginning, the lights would flash. It was that moment where we wanted to communicate, you're about to hear the word of God. Something's going to break in from the upside down into our world and communicate an eternal message. And I don't know if you've noticed, but these guys on the stage will do absolutely anything to get your attention. Just like Will's mom. Everybody thought she was crazy, but she knew there was a communication from another world. And as soon as she figured it out, she convinced everybody else, Will escaped. And then people understand what the real upside down was all about. I'm going to be honest, it's our fault. It's our fault as adults. Did you hear the question? On earth as it is in heaven, can one life make a difference? If it's not just about me, how am I supposed to go and make an impact in the world? Are you telling me that really if I surrender, Josh, and I bow my knee to Christ, and I go into the world, this is all of a sudden upside down? I mean, I appreciate it, Rob, that you almost died on the stage summarizing everything to us. But are you really saying that these words of Jesus that seem so upside down are really right side up and it's what our world needs? Absolutely, that's what we're saying. But it's our fault. Because we've made your faith too safe. You know why I like Stranger Things? is because it reminds me of the world I grew up in because it was set in the 80s. I mean, who else? Think about what goes on. These kids are just riding around on their bikes in the middle of the night. Hey, mom, we'll be home. That was my world. Our parents, I guess they just didn't care. They would just let us go. And then when the sun went down, here's how my mom got a hold of me. Pre-cell phone, people. David! David! And about two or three houses down, Martha Bradshaw would come out and go, Lena, what do you need? I need David at supper time. David! (laughs) And it would go all the way down the street to the O'Neills. I'm not kidding. It's over a block. And we would be down in the creek area playing basketball under the lights. And the O'Neills, who was a police officer, were going to listen to him. He goes, David! I'm like, yes, sir. And I start walking my way back home. But then we could play underneath the lights until mom did this. Flash, 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 flash. Then we had to go in. Because she was no longer going to call our name. She was going to whip our butt. Okay, so that's what that meant. That was the world we grew up in. This was our playground equipment. I want you to look at this. Now, before you laugh, let me just say this is dangerous. And I had one of these in my backyard. So I had to show you a picture. It's not my backyard, but I had this. It is dangerous for a fat little elementary school kid to be on one of those ends or the other. And my sister, bless her heart, I hope she's not here. She was bigger than me. So if we're on both sides, if we're on both sides, we're fine. But if my sister, and she did it quite often, hey, I'm getting off, and she did it on purpose, that sucker would flip. No one called the manufacturer. No one said, oh my word, we need to put some rubber things underneath this we need to get some sawdust and put it underneath there david come wear a helmet no if we were out playing on that thing we weren't in the house it was a break for our parents can't believe i'm going to show you this one this is the best thing invented by man Mm. do you know how fast you can throw up when you're on that thing so imagine You hear the ice cream truck. We didn't have bomb pops at Walmart. We didn't have gourmet ice cream. You had vanilla, you had chocolate, but we had the ice cream truck, people. And when that sucker started to go, we would beg, borrow, and steal out of our parents' supply. We're like going, I got to have a quarter. And fat little David's going after that truck. Wait, wait. We get sugared up and we go to the park. It was time. Fat kid had it figured out. I'm going to be in the middle. 
Marky across the street was fast, so I made him kind of go around in circles. He went really fast. Do you know how fast a fat kid can slide off the middle? <laughs> We'd do that for hours. And Marky usually got slapped by my feet, and he'd fall down. He'd cry for a little bit. I'm like, sissy, come on. We literally said rub some dirt on it. That's the way that we grew up. We're not, that's not made up. It's like, I don't want to go home. Do you want to stop playing? I don't want to stop playing. What are we going to do? Look at black and white TV and the four channels? Yeah. No, blah. We had cartoons in the morning for exactly 30 minutes. And then we had two cartoons at noontime. It's called Cartoon Carnival in Dallas-Fort Worth. We had two. And that, you're welcome. And after that, when we got a little bit older, had a little bit of Tom and Jerry, Bugs Bunny, Roadrunner, but... You don't know you have boomerangs. So what happened on Saturday, I mean, that was awesome. We had a, you know, a couple of hours, but then we were up mowing the yard, raking leaves. We had to be outside, just what you did. That sucker was awesome, but we didn't cry because that's what we did. Let me show you my playground equipment. There it was. Now... Growing up in Dallas-Fort Worth, we have this thing called I-35, and some of y'all are from Dallas-Fort Worth. That is always, that has always been under construction. I, I don't know what to, it's ever since I was born. It started with two lanes, now it's a bazillion. I mean, that's what happens. And every time they do construction, they would have these nice little cement drainage pipes. And that's how we got our playground equipment at Central. I mean, we had those little monkey bar things and all, but literally, and this is funny, this is a group of third world kids playing in a sewage pipe. That was what happened at Central Elementary. They would take a big crane and they put a sewage pipe in the middle of the field and say, y'all kids go have fun. And the teachers are on the other side of the school smoking their cigarettes. <laughs> David, be careful. <laughs> there they were. We'd run in and out. We'd play king of the mountain on top of that thing. Somebody'd fall down. <laughs> go see the nurse. I mean, that's what they did. Oh, it was fun times. And we did try to see if we could actually take a swing and go over the top and flip. That was so, again, fat little kid's not going to do that. But what I would do, I would get going so fast, you know what's going to happen. Woo, here we go, jump. Now my jump was like, yeah. But some of these kids would just fly off. There was no teacher there. There was no sawdust. There was no rubber little pellet things. It was just like, there they go. He deserved it. I mean, that's what they would do. Wow. Not proud of this, but it was kind of fun. I played in the sewer. Um, down the street from where I lived, because you'd have to play in the street. And this is how we played ball before select sports. We actually just played. If somebody had a bat, somebody had a ball, gloves were optional, and we would say, okay, that water meter is first base. We're going to put a rock in the middle of the street for a second. Third is the meter on the other side. Home plate is a piece of wood we found somewhere. Now, if you hit the ball and you miss it, it goes into the gutter. You get in trouble in our neighborhood if you lose the ball because that's money. So we took turns shimming down the gutter, holding each other's feet to get the ball. It's hard for a little fat kid. I mean, I'm sitting there going. Just squirreling up through there, grab the ball. Okay, pull me out. And they don't even listen to me, so I got to squirrel back. That's why I got problems with tight spaces. But then we realize if we go down the pipe, we get to this bigger pipe area, and we can actually travel the entire city of Louisville underground. That was awesome. I found out a lot about people and what they do down there and all the drug stuff that I don't sell. But I mean, it's down underneath there. Oh, my word. It's all good till you pop up in the middle of Fox Avenue and the car goes, Ring. and the only time you get in trouble is when someone says, Lena, I think I saw your boy. He popped out of Fox Avenue. They didn't call on the cell phone. Nobody got upset. They had to actually open up a phone book, and they go, now, where was he? That's the phrases. And Okay, here we go. Pebblebrook. That's good. I, I don't, is that the right lane? I'll call this person. I'll call the Bradshaws. And So they called the Bradshaws. Do you think David is, do you see him? Hold on a second. David! <laughs> nope, that's probably him. I'll go down and talk to Lena. So he goes, she goes down, goes, Lena, Dave's playing in the sewer again and popped up on Fox Avenue. There was no meeting. My mom didn't say, you stop judging my precious little boy. He would never 
Never play in the sewer. We're moving to another neighborhood. This place is awful. No. She goes, thank you. I'll take care of it. I was in trouble before I ever got home. No, don't awe nothing. I deserved it. So here's the deal. In that world, here's what we learned, and I need your attention. We learned that sometimes rusty playground equipment hurts. And so if you rip your hand open, you learn how to take care of that, and you learn where the rust is so you're not going to do it a second time. And you know there's actual research that because your playground equipment is so safe, you don't know how to take pain. And you get hurt a lot more than we did because everything is nice and protected for you. You would never, ever have a piece of sewage equipment in the middle of your elementary school because some PTA mom would go, oh my word, that's terrible for my kid. Who knows where that's been? So what we're going to do is we're going to have a fun drive. We're going to sell popcorn and we're going to sell sticky things and we're going to sell candles and we're just going to call you and ask for your money until we get a glorious three-story playground and it's going to have plastic stuff and Ronald McDonald is just going to be flipping in the middle there and it's going to be awesome and spit out fries and the next thing you know, Disney will come down, grab my kid, take him to Disney World. That's what they want. But you know what that's caused you? You feel entitled. Because if you don't get things your way, you go home and tell your parents, and the parents go and tell your teacher, well, let's skip that. They don't even talk to the teacher anymore. They go to the board, and they get your teachers fired. You know, this idea of, of playing sports and just kind of playing for fun today if you don't get the team you want, you go to a different school. If you don't get the position you want, your parents come up and gripe. And if you don't like that, then I'm going to go to a small school where my kid can play because I've got to have the experience. Adults, I would love to say it's about the kids, but we're the ones that have ruined it so they can't even answer tonight's question. Because we don't believe they can change the world. Because we don't want them to risk getting hurt. Here's what the Bible says. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the what? Man, I wish I could just out of my Bible. The last beatitude, frequently not appearing on some bookmarks, fancy enough. This verse is not going to appear on a lot of refrigerators. Hey, just want to tell you, as I've given you your lunch, a little smiley face, I'm glad I just made your favorite sandwich. It's beautiful. Go out and just... By the way, let me remind you, some people are going to hate you. Have a good day, son. <laughs> Blessed are you when people insult you. You're not going to talk to my kid that way. What if somebody talking to you that way is actually a mark of the kingdom? When people persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me... Oh, my word. Is that true? Because if this is true about my kid, you can't come and tell me my kid is playing in the sewer. Was your kid playing in the sewer? If my kid's going to get in trouble, what's going to happen to the other kid? And we need equity because that's what happens. You cannot mess with our precious kids in bubble wrap. Rejoice and be glad. That's funny. It's actually a mark of greatness when all those things happen. It actually means you're understanding the upside down kingdom when people do that. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. It hasn't changed. The kingdom still comes at the same price. Everything. And all week long, we've been just trying to flash light, saying there's something else. And these teachers, the people on stage are going crazy like Will's mother, trying to get your attention. Eternity's trying to communicate with you that what the world calls right side up is actually upside down. And what the world calls upside down is abundant life. And let me just tell you, if the world doesn't persecute you, you're not living it. You're like, Dave, that's kind of unfair. Well, let me tell you what we do. It looks something like this. We find ourselves surrounded by light. 
I mean, we don't want to be where the darkness is, so we're going to go to every Christian activity we can. And let me just tell you, I love this week. I love camp. I, I hate the last day because I know reality is here and the false world is going to start to come in. That's just life. And boy, we used to do some incredible things. It'd be 110 degrees. We'd make a fire and we'd hold hands. And we'd sing, it only takes a spark. To get a fire going. And the last verse was great. I'll shout it from the mountaintops. Yeah, that's what would happen. And then the youth minister would say, if you really love Jesus, I'm going to sing that one more time. I'll shout it from the mountaintop. Now, some of you don't really love Jesus because you're not singing praise God. We need the outside world to hear us all the way from Lubbock. Let's let them hear us in Dallas, Fort Worth. Here we go. I'll shout them in the mountaintops. Praise God. Oh, isn't that great? And we would sit around and we'd cry and say, I love you forever, man. And then some kid would pray this, God, thank you so much for bringing us to this mountaintop. And we'd raise hands if we're actually pretty, trying to live on the edge. And Father, just pray that you keep us on the mountaintop. And for 31 years, I cringe. Because God didn't create you to live on a mountaintop. And the reality is you're going to wake up Sunday, and even though the person next to you is driving you crazy, you're going to go, man, I miss the smell of the dorm. Or you're going to be like, man, I don't don't know if I want to, you know, I just, and after a while, the I'll shout it from the mountaintop. It's not, praise God, it's, praise God. Praise God. Man. I can hardly wait for camp to come back. See, light and darkness. Darkness has a way of just kind of snapping. That's reality. It doesn't always feel good to be part of the kingdom. It, there's other times when we sing. It's kind of fun. I love singing here. You won't sing this way Sunday morning. Hopefully, that would really freak people out, especially the adults that brought you. They'd be going, it's not my fault. I swear. It's a guy named Thomas. It's, I have his email. Go talk to him. But there's so much excitement and there's so much emotion and you feel God. And there's going to be a moment when you go home and you're not going to feel God when you worship. I've been there. We're singing about God's love, but I don't feel it. We're singing about God's peace and I'm anxious. We're singing about God's deliverance and I feel like I'm in bondage. That just happens. But we're like, okay, well, at least I know that I'm here. And we're like, okay, we got to create something so our kids are totally safe, okay? So if they're emotionally insecure, sometimes they have weird feelings. This is create environments for them. Woo, I spent too much time in the dark right there. Let's create protective bubbles. Only the right people are going to be in our youth group. Only we're going to send our kids to the most protected schools. We're going to, do every, we're going to put this Christian wall around them. But you understand, teenager, you're in high school, that in the most protected places, darkness still comes in. Years ago, I had a group of girls, cheerleaders, that decided that when their parents dropped them off, because their parents weren't really involved, that they would just drive all the way to Denton, Texas, to the hookah bar. And so when youth group is over, they would show up with their Bibles going, hey, how was youth group done? It was great, mom. It was wonderful. After a while, we found out what happened. So we told the parents and we had this meeting. And the parents said this, Dave, I know that you're trying to bring lost people in. But all these visitors are really tempting our children. I just stopped and I said, your kids go to Christian school. And the ones your kids drove to Denton with are from Christian school. You have another problem. And the daughter looked at the mom and started yelling at her saying, you have no clue what goes on in my world. Back and forth from light and dark. With the adults trying to protect us from something they can't protect us from. Because if you bow the knee to Jesus Christ, you are now a target of the evil one. And if you actually try to live out a life that puts the kingdom of God first, that has an anchored citizenship in the kingdom, if you try to live out a sexuality that God wants you to have, if you try to deal with your anger, and if you try to love the way that God loves, if you live that life, 
You will be persecuted. Woohoo! It means you're doing something great. So would you say this with me? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Say it again. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Most of us have been taught that the kingdom of God is something we wait for. And there's certainly a reality when that day will come and all the persecution will be done away with and I hope that it comes quickly. I don't mean to be selfish because if you don't know the Lord, I hate saying that. But there will be a time where every knee will bow and the full reality of the victory of the kingdom of God, we're on the winning team. We're be like going, woo, see you later suckers. It's going to be awesome. Now, here's the problem. If Satan can make you believe that the kingdom is to come, then we'll do nothing except hang out in light bubbles. But here's what our Lord prayed. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom of God is not something we wait for. The kingdom of God is something we live in. I'm going to say that again. The kingdom of God is not something we wait for. The kingdom of God is something we live in today. It's not something we have to wait for. We're involved in something that is literally turning the world upside down. The first night we talked about all of this stuff and all the accusations you heard as the lights flickered, you heard these comments, Christianity and religion has done nothing but brought harm. Let me tell you the truth. Every hospital that has ever been started, the very beginning of those roots when people were running away from the black plague, it was the Christians who ran into the black plague. That still goes on today. The tsunami that happened in Thailand years ago. We lost contact with a guy named John Jones, the old preacher at Richland Hills who was in charge of Bread for the Hungry World. He loved this area. Knowing that a tsunami was coming, he literally would travel. He'd put $2,000 in his boots, not making this up. And he'd get on the plane and he'd walk among his people. And when the United States government wasn't even there, John Jones was there with $2,000 because of Christianity. The kingdom of God has caused more good than bad. But the evil one would want you to think that we do cause bad. And you know when we cause bad? When the kingdom doesn't come to earth and we live in little white bubbles. Adults, if all you do is count attendance and the language and the actions, you're living in a white bubble. Because some of these kids will have perfect attendance and walk away from faith because they're bored stiff with Christianity. Shame on us for giving them so much safety that they don't understand the adventure of spinning on a merry-go-round and throwing up. Forgive us for making it so safe that we protect their monkey bars. Because if we do this right, church, this is going to happen. You are the world's seasoning. Love this, to make it tolerable. Somebody's waiting for you. Somebody's waiting for you to be an authentic believer, for the kingdom of God to come to earth. They don't need to hear any more sermons. They don't need to be invited to church. They don't need to be given any more meals. They don't need white people to drive around and feed the poor people and say, oh, look at us, we're so good, we've served. They need someone to sit down and talk to them. They just need to have a meal with someone. They need us as Christian neighbors to actually go over and say, how are you doing? We need to say hi when people show up to church instead of just being sure that the three generations that always sit in the same pew have to be happy. That's bull crap. I'm going to call it the way that it is. Our world needs us to make it tolerable. And if you lose your flavor, I love this, what will happen to the world? God doesn't have another plan. We are his plan. His kingdom is the plan. 
And you yourselves will be thrown and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the world's light. A city on a hill glowing in the night for all to see. We don't huddle behind our walls and say the world is such a bad place. You know it's a bad place. I travel a lot and I hear a lot of people preach. And sometimes we're really good at telling saved people how bad the world is. But I spend a lot of time with uncaged pagans, and you don't have to convince them that the world is a bad place. They are looking for good news. They don't need to be reminded that they're going to hell. They know it. They want to know if we know where we're going. They want to know if it's more than a Sunday morning country club or a Wednesday night thing or even a weekend encounter. They're wondering, athlete, what's going to happen Monday when you show up at your practice. They wonder... Musician, what's going to happen when you show up to band camp? They wonder what's going to happen when you get back online. How are you going to talk when you speak to people across the world on your internet games? They're waiting to see, will your faith be something? Will you glow for all of us to see? Don't hide your light. Let it shine for all. Let your good deeds glow for all to see this so they may praise your who? Father in heaven. If the kingdom goes forward, they don't see just us in our goodness. They see the Father. You're like, yeah, Jesus did that. We have a song. This is the light of mine. Don't let it out. We got it. You realize it's always been God's intention. Jesus was actually talking about God's intention thousands of years before. Isaiah chapter 2. This is what Isaiah, son of Amaz, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord, the temple, will be established. As the highest of the mountains, it will be exalted above the hills. And everybody read that with me. All nations will stream to it. Say it again. All nations will stream to it. When we live a kingdom life, people will come, just like Peter said, and ask you, why are you doing what you're doing? When we live out this city on a hill, when we live out what we've been talking about all week long. We become so odd that even though people accuse us of doing wrong, they start to see God. Even though there's pushback, they start to say this. These people who've been turning the world, say it with me, upside down. It happened before and it can happen again. But it has to be more than just words. Our country turned the world upside down. People who didn't have an organized army, who didn't know what to do. And our generals didn't know what to do. Nobody wanted to give supplies to our people. And George Washington just tried to figure out, how do I maneuver enough so that we can have a fighting chance? Because when our people would stand against the superpower of the day, they would retreat. It took years. As soon as we signed that document, it said, we are an independent country. It's not that Britain said, hey, that's great. It's wonderful. It took years before the Battle of Concord happened. Till finally we learned that freedom is worth fighting for. Finally, till we learned as a nation that freedom costs you something. I'm waiting for that to happen to the church. Because it cost us very little to say that I'm a Christian today. And as Rob said, we have people around the world praying that the church in America would be persecuted so we would wake up and turn the world upside down because we did it once before. We negotiate the terms of surrender. I see George Washington smile. We escort the men out of your town. They stagger home single file. Tens of thousands of people flood the streets. There are screams and church bells ringing. And as our fallen foes retreat, I hear the drinking song they're singing. The world turned upside down. 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 Freedom for Yahika, freedom for Christ. So they turned the world upside down. 
Do you realize what happened on that day? Thousands of years ago. When Christ literally turned the world upside down. By going to hell itself and turning everything upside down. Everything good in this world comes from some kind of narrative. And the narrative that you just saw there, that freedom wins and is worth a cost. That the oppressed should be set free. And that God gave us certain rights. It's not a story that is alien to the people of God. It's the story that started with God. People made in the image of God turned upside down by sin. And God calls Abraham. And Isaac and Jacob. He calls Moses. He gives them a law. He calls Joshua. And they set up a very ragtag, very confusing, weird system. Kings, captivity, kings, captivity, pain, oppression. And a poor teenage girl has a baby. And the world doesn't even notice. But that baby grows. And that baby gives a life. And the baby would say, as a man, he who has ears, let him hear. The upside down is being turned right by God. I want you to be a part of that. So when the British left and they stacked their arms and they had to walk through our troops to go to the boats, this is actually the upside down song. This is what they were playing. Don't need to dance. I need you to listen to it. Nobody needs to see you dance. I want you to hear. So you actually go to Hamilton and you hear it. There we go. Thanks. Just won't go away. The world keeps turning upside down. That's good. When you hear Hamilton, you hear the same drum sequence behind. And the legend is, when they were defeated, when the world turned upside down, this is what the British general played and told his troops to play as they got on the ships and they left. And the world would never be the same. How do we do this? How do we turn the world upside down? Because it's really good to say, hey, let's go turn the world upside down. What does it look like? It may look like Cade and Walker. Cade was Mr. Fort Worth Christian. He was the captain of the football team. He was Mr. Fort Worth Christian, and every girl wanted to date him. He ended up getting a scholarship at Abilene Christian on the first time he touched a ball he scored. And then there was Walker, who was Mr. Richland High School. Literally was Mr. Richland High School. And he was the starting quarterback. And both of these kids found themselves in my youth group. And at the time, there was private school and there was public school. And they decided that something was going to change. And they turned everything upside down by becoming friends. And before you knew it, people just started kind of meshing together. But then it got even crazier because there was a kid named Aaron. Aaron had nobody. Aaron had a grandmother who was raising him. And at the time is when we wore our white shirts outside of our clothes because Abercrombie and Fitch thought it was cool. And so Aaron wanted to be like that. And all he could find is one of his grandpa's old shirts. It was a raggedy old thing that was stained. But he would show up to church like that, just wanting to fit in. And do you know what Caden Walker did? They turned the world upside down. They said, Aaron, you're going to sit with us. And so there they go. Every Sunday, they sit together. Every camp, Aaron, are you going? Every mission trip, Aaron, are you going? Aaron, can we come and take you out to eat? It's an amazing experience to watch what happened. And so one day, even though I knew what the answer was, I said, why are you coming to church, Aaron? And here's what he said. Because if I wasn't here, Caden Walker would miss me. You hear it? And the kingdom of Satan is destroyed. And the world is turned upside down because that wasn't supposed to happen. 
private school and public school, they don't really mix. And jocks don't mess with people who have nothing to give, but they did. I could tell you about a young lady after we did one of those 40-hour fasts. 30-hour fast. 40 would kill me. 30-hour fast. We actually spent the night outside the church in cardboard boxes in freezing temperatures. One of the greatest, stupidest things I've ever done. We had so much fun. The TV showed up. It was crazy. They showed up going, what are y'all doing sleeping outside? Now, a lot of you have done that, and that's great. And everybody's like, yes, and everybody wanted to be on TV. Oh, look at us. We're, we're sleeping in boxes for all the poor people in the world. We're making a statement. You've been a part of that. But one young lady decided to do something because she wanted the kingdom of God to come into her world, for it to be on earth as it is in heaven. So she realized that $500 can free one young lady her age from the sex trafficking industry. So she came up with a great idea. We had to change the name, but the first name of this idea was Suckers for Sex Slaves. And I said, that's, we're not doing that one. <clears throat> but she bought a bunch of suckers, and she sold them at church, but she took them to school. And she made these goofy little shirts by the way, this girl was very popular at her school. This girl was someone who didn't have to do this to fit in. Her world was turned upside down by this idea that there's someone her age that is being involved in horrible things, and she had to do something about it. She wanted to be a city on a hill. She wanted to be light. She wanted to be salt. She wanted God's kingdom to come to earth. That girl alone raised $1,500, and there's three girls that were rescued from the sex trafficking. And the world was turned upside down, and the kingdom of God was raised, and the kingdom of darkness walked away in defeat. Because one girl sold suckers. Boba Fett showed up at our church, very insecure young man. He didn't talk. He really literally showed up in a Boba Fett costume with a hoodie. And when he got really nervous, he zipped it up. And after a few months, we had this big retreat. And at the retreat, he was in our small group. And I remember there were a couple of elders there and my wife and I and different people working with this group. And for the first time, this young man spoke. And he began to talk about abuse he began to talk about anger. He took his Boba Fett thing off. He's just sitting there. And I remember the elder looking at me going, this is your territory. And I'm like, you're the shepherd. It was kind of funny a little bit. <laughs> he started coming around. There's another kid in our group who just got a full scholarship for track. He's one of the fastest athletes. Some of y'all know him, Ethan Christian. He goes to your high school. He's a state hurdler fast, wonderful young man. But he also knows the Lord. And I still remember the Sunday in front of 2,500 people. I'm on this flight of stairs and I'm, I'm watching our young people because our young people like to jump up and down and do all that kind of stuff during worship and it's crazy. And Boba Fett decided, this is the day. I'm going to go join the rest of the group. And he comes. It was so funny. Our preacher's sitting there just getting ready, you know, feeling the music, doing his thing. You know, going over his lesson notes. And Boba Fett walks in right in front of him. By the way, he had a cape with this awesome outfit. So he's just like, and it's like the whole church kind of went, this kid's serious about Star Wars. I mean, that's kind of what was happening. But he didn't know what to do. All the eyes are on him. Worship was going on. And Ethan felt somebody. And he turned around. And he put his arm around Boba Fett and brought him in. And the kingdom of God turned the kingdom of darkness upside down. And heaven came to earth once again. You can do that. You can do that. You can do it. 
It's not your youth minister's job. It's not your mom and dad's job. They may not even know how to do it. I'm pleading with you. We need you to do it because we are too scared at times. We're scared of the world. We're scared of everything. Stop being scared. He who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. We resist the devil. He will flee from us. Submit to God. Draw near to him and he draws near to you. The kingdom of God is going forward and I want you a part of that. I want to be a part of that. I want you to pull up these lyrics. We sing this song all the time. I can't sing it. I get emotional. So when we first sang it, I'm over there. I don't even know if, if anybody noticed. I just sit there and I'm, I'm quiet because it bothers me. I think we sing a lot of songs that we don't know what they mean and we just get all excited. But do you really know what you're singing? I was next to Josh Ross, a friend of mine, at a, at a conference, and this comes up, and I just was like, dude. And he's like, man, Dave, what's wrong? This is a pretty good song. I'm like, because all these people are singing it, and they don't believe it. They're not going to do what it takes. I mean, we could sing it inside our safe walls, but are, are we going to go out and just do the simple things like, inviting someone to be part of our youth group or are we just going to sell suckers are we going to ask Boba Fett to come it's not complicated things but do we even notice are they, these things that we could turn the kingdom of God upside down Ren Collective wrote this and the reason they wrote it and I love this quote because we always say let's go build your kingdom in Africa but they're like what about here see they come from a war torn land they're not Americans and most of y'all may be reading this going yes let's bring our nation back they're singing that about their own world, and we should be singing it about ours. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. And in, their in the 90s in Europe, we all started praying for revival, and he said, everybody just stop. Then he goes, we need to pray for revival again. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire. Holy Spirit, invade us now. We are your church. We need your power in us. Can we amen that? Amen. We seek your kingdom what? Thirst. We hunger and we thirst the middle of those beatitudes. <laughs> Refuse, oh, hear that, to waste our lives. Do you know how many people I know that have more money than all of us combined and they're worthless? They're going to die with a bunch of money. Do you know how many people I know that have a bazillion dollars that use it for the kingdom of God and they seem to have more and more and more and they like to take you out to supper and I'm like, man, that's great. So, I mean, here's the deal. They don't want to waste their lives. Somebody asked me, I was speaking at A&M and they said, Dr. Frey is one of these academic things. What are you afraid of? And I thought for a moment and I said, I'm afraid of getting it to the end of my life. And thinking I wasted it. For you are our joy and prize. We want to see the captive's hearts released. The hurt, the sick, and the poor at peace. I love this. We lay down our lives for heaven's cause. I'm not so sure your family will let you do all that. Some of you will be, want to be involved in ministry. And one of the things I hear all the time from people, well, how much money will my kid make? You know what? You're going to do fine. But if you're into this thing because of money, you better go start your mega church. We are your church. We pray revive this earth. Build your kingdom here. Let the darkness Fear, and I sing that and I weep because I don't think Satan is afraid of very many of us. You don't understand, Dave. We sing with solfege. We still have shape notes. Satan hates shape notes. We serve communion from the front and the back, and we're ambidextrous and go both ways. Who cares? <clears throat> you don't understand. We have tracks on every available topic, and our preacher knows the answer to every question does not scare the evil one at all. 
until the kingdom begins to go to earth and you invite people to be involved and you sell suckers and Boba Fett comes to church. Now that starts to heal our streets and our land. So set your church on fire. Win this nation back. And we're not talking about the Democrats need to be in and the Republicans out or the Republicans need to be in and Democrats out. Stop it. That doesn't win anything. It doesn't matter who's in the White House because the White House has no control other than what the Lord gives the White House. So stop it. Have no feelings on that whatsoever. Change the atmosphere. And this is what Rent Collective meant by it. Build your kingdom here. Not an encounter. Here. We pray. Unleash your kingdom's power. Reaching the near and the far. No force of hell can stop the, your, the, your beauty changing hearts. You made us more than much, much more than this. What are they talking about? Just going to church? Worshiping, jumping up and down, having fun, acting the fool. I love that. Doesn't intimidate the evil one. What intimidates the evil one is when you invite Aaron to church, when you sell suckers, and Boba Fett is invited into your group. That intimidates the devil. You made us much more than this. Awaken the kingdom seed in us. Fill us with strength and love of Christ. We are your church. We are the hope of earth. Build your kingdom here. Let the darkness fear show your mighty hand. Heal our streets and our land. Set your church on fire. Win this nation back. Change the atmosphere. Build your kingdom here. Build your kingdom here. Let the darkness fear show your mighty hand. Do you believe God can do what he did in Pentecost? Do you believe what God can do when he said those people, Jason and those guys, turned the world upside down? Do you believe that he answers prayer? Do you believe that he can use your life? Does one life make a difference? Yes. So set your church on fire. Change the atmosphere. Build your kingdom here, we pray. I want best friends to come on out. So I was at a conference and it's a long day working with people. It's just crazy. Get really exhausted. And Wren Collective was our band. And those guys are just, dude, they get after it. They got instruments I've never seen. I mean, some kind of boom chuck thing. Like, chink, 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 chink. And they pop up in the crowd and they run around and lights are going, what? I'm like, oh, I just want to sit down. <laughs> and the leader of the band stopped everyone. A crowd of 3,000 youth workers. And he said, stop it! Worship was intended to kick God's people out of the church, not to keep them in. It's not about coming to church. It's about being the church. It's about leaving. It's about invading your family, invading your friend's life, invading your teams, invading your school, invading the world. And it doesn't take some kind of big mission trip. That's cheap. That is very, very safe. If 10 of us go across the seas, that takes very little courage because I'm with you. What takes courage is for you to invite Aaron to come to church, to sell suckers because your heart's broken, and for Boba Fett to sit next to you. That's church. And that's what this song is talking about. So this is our invitation tonight. But don't you dare stand up and sing it and go crazy if you don't believe it. Don't you dare do that to this song. It's not about you. It's about him. And you submit. And you start to receive a little pushback. This song's going to mean a little bit more to you. But you know what? I had a lot of fun on that crazy playground equipment. I had fun on that little spinny thing. And the sewer was kind of cool. I want that for you. I want that for you. And we need that. And God wants us to bring the kingdom of God to earth. And it starts with a decision. So we're going to sing. And if you can sing this song, 
and submit yourself to the upside down kingdom, I want you to sing it like you never have before. But if you can't, I want you to sit there and pray and just look at this. This will be your confession. Can I be that person? Can I let the rule and reign of God come into my heart? Can I give him the kingdom? Can I put one foot in his kingdom? Can I give my sexuality over to him? Can I give my anger over to him? Can I give my love over to him? Can I let this world see a turned upside down life and that you stand up and sing like crazy and for some of you you may want to join that kingdom you're like that's what i want that's real then run up here and fill out a card and we'll baptize you tonight i don't care if the camera's not working we'll just keep singing and dunking you i mean it'll be awesome <laughs> some of you need to do that because that's the excitement of the kingdom be a part of that turn the world upside down be a part of it. Let's stand. I'm going to pray. Nope, be seated. Sorry, I forgot to tell you. You get to stand if you want to. We're going to see who stands and sings this song. I'm going to pray for response. We have people up here. If you need to respond publicly, fine. But I want you to all, I want all of us to recommit to this world turned upside down. Father, we love you and we thank you. I pray that when, when I sing this song, I can feel more comfortable about my own life. I pray that when I sing this song, I can feel more excited about your people that are standing around me. Father, I pray that we understand and believe what we're saying. Father, forgive us for raising a generation to be safe and to just be these nice little people that live in light. Father, let this generation risk it all. Let them push back darkness. Let it be said of them that this generation was the one that turned this world upside down. Respond if you need to. In Jesus' name, amen.